Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we're going to look at a ballistic pendulum problem. This is a very standard problem in all AP physics or undergraduate physics courses, college physics, university physics. You'll probably come across a problem like this. Uh, typically this type of system is used to measure the speed of a bullet, which would be pretty hard, right? Because it moves so fast it's kind of hard to <laughs> just to look at and to measure it. Maybe now you can use kind of uh, cameras to slow down the speed and analyze its motion. But before all of this technology was available, this is a very simple system to uh, use to measure the speed of a bullet. So typically what you have is you have a bullet that's initially fired from a gun or from a rifle, and it's moving really, really fast, hundreds of meters per second. And what we're going to have here is a wooden block that's typically just suspended from, say, two strings like the way I have it in the diagram. And the mass of the block is bigger than the mass of the bullet. The mass of the bullet's pretty small, big block. Now what happens? That bullet is going to hit the block, it will splinter the block a little bit, and it's going to generate some heat. And eventually that bullet gets embedded in the block. And as it does that, well, everything starts to move. There's nothing stopping the block from moving, so the mass of the block and the bullet, they get combined, and they start to move up. And they're eventually going to swing up to some maximum height. Okay, so that's kind of all of the physics here. We're going to have some initial kinetic energy of the bullet. We're going to have conservation of linear momentum in the horizontal direction during this collision. Uh, I'll talk about that. And then after that, we have this system of bullet and block that are going to move up. They have a lot of kinetic energy initially, and that kinetic energy gets converted into gravitational potential energy. During the second step, we don't have conservation of momentum anymore, and I'll explain why. So this is kind of a nice problem. We're going to break it down into the different sections before the collision, after the collision, and then when you're at, the block is at its maximum height. So let's go ahead, let's set this up, and I'll give you some numerical numbers after uh, for the mass and the uh, height, for example, and we'll calculate what this initial velocity of the bullet is. We'll compare the kinetic energy. We'll look at even the impulse. All right, let's do it all for this one particular problem. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. I'll get back to you. All right, I've broken down this collision into three different sections here. We have before the collision, we have the bullet here that's traveling uh, toward this stationary block, and it's traveling at some initial velocity V0. The block is stationary. So this initial bullet here has some kinetic energy. I'll call it K sub zero. That's the initial kinetic energy of the bullet only. The block is not moving. Uh, this bullet also has some initial momentum, right? The initial momentum of the bullet, I'll just call it P zero. And again, it's only the uh, momentum of the bullet. Now, during the collision, what happens? There's a force, right? There's a force during this collision. There's a force on the bullet. The force on the bullet is trying to slow it down a little bit, and the same force is actually acting on the block, right? These are the action-reaction pairs. Um, and the amount of time that this collision lasts for, let's just call it delta T, is going to be relatively short, okay? Uh, which basically means that there's not a lot of swinging of the block and the bullet during this collision over here. So that means... Actually, if you have this, that means there are no external forces. If the, it doesn't swing very high, I mean, there's gravity acting down, there's the tension acting up, but there's really no external force acting in this horizontal direction. Okay, so I'll say no external forces in the X direction. Okay, and that's really important because what that allows us to do is if there's no external force in this X direction during the collision, it means that we have conservation of linear momentum. So let me write that down. Of linear uh, momentum. All right, and the last section then is what we're going to have now is this bullet that is embedded inside the block and everything is kind of swinging up. It's going to swing up to some maximum height. So basically what we have is we are basically converting uh, initial kinetic energy, which is the uh, bullet and the block combined, converting K into uh, gravitational potential energy, which we typically use the letter U for that. Okay. Uh, in this last section, we don't have conservation of linear momentum. Okay. Momentum changes... And the reason momentum changes is because there's external forces, right? We have gravity, uh, we have tension, 
Uh, tension doesn't do any work in this case because it's always kind of perpendicular to the motion, but there are external forces, so linear momentum is not conserved in this last section. All right, let's go ahead now and put all these pieces together and do some math and apply some of these principles to analyze this motion. All right, so let's have a look at this one. So before the collision, we're going to have some linear momentum. And actually, just to kind of write this shorter, I'm just going to write mass of the bullet just as mb, and its velocity is going to be v0. So before the collision, I have the momentum of the bullet, which is mb multiplied by v0. And that's it. This block is not moving, so there's no need to add its, its linear momentum. All right, and after the collision, right, immediately after the collision, we have uh, the bullet here, which gets embedded in the block, and everything here is moving together as one. So that means that the mass of this entire system is the mass of the bullet plus the mass of this bigger block, right, which I'm calling uppercase M. And everything here is moving at some final velocity here, and I'm just going to write it as Vx over here. All right, so this is linear momentum. Let me just go ahead and write that on the side. And we have conservation because there's no external forces uh, in the x direction during this collision. All right, or at least it's going to be very small. There might be a little component of the tension because it does actually swing up a little bit, uh, but it's pretty small. All right, what else can I write? Well, I can look at the initial kinetic energy, right? The initial kinetic energy of the bullet. Let's call it Kb. Uh, that is simply one half. That's the mass of the bullet and multiplied by V initial squared. Okay, that's the initial momentum. And what about if I was going to write after the collision? Well, after the collision, I have this entire block, which has a total mass of mass of the bullet plus uppercase M. So after, let's call it Ka for after the collision. Um, this here would be one half. Remember the mass of the system, everything moves as one. This is a perfectly inelastic collision. All right. And now it's velocity after the collision is what I'm calling Vx over here. So I simply have Vx. Um, and squared. So that's it. We're going to later compare both of those numbers, and you're going to see that both of those are definitely not equal to the same value because this is a an inelastic collision because I started with two pieces and FDA and I only have one. All right, and then what do we have? Well, subsequently, actually, what we're going to have after is we're going to be converting all of this initial kinetic energy here, which I'm calling Ka. All of this will eventually get converted into gravitational potential energy. So if you look at over here, how much gravitational potential energy do I have? Well, I've gone up a certain distance, which I'm calling H maximum. So the gravitational potential energy, if you remember, is simply the mass, mass of the system times little g times the, the height, right? So if I write it down for this system, well, what's the mass of the system? It's mass of the bullet plus uppercase M. That's the total mass. Everything is swinging up multiplied by little g, and multiplied by the maximum height, which I'm calling h max. Okay. All right, so there we have it. So we have conservation of linear momentum for the first two parts that connects them, and then we have conservation of mechanical energy over here during the second two parts, right? So now we have to simply combine everything because my goal at the end is to find what is the velocity of this bullet. All right, so here's what we have here. I just made things a little bit smaller. So we have all the important information here. Equation one, conservation of momentum. Equation two, conservation of energy. Uh, just after the collision, all the way to the maximum swing, the maximum height. Okay, my goal is to obtain an expression for the initial speed of the bullet in this case. So let's go ahead first and uh, just write down that expression. Okay, so starting with equation one, let's call it one star. Here we're going to have, I'm just going to isolate that initial velocity of the bullet. So you simply divide through by the mass of the bullet. And what you get here is mass of the bullet plus mass of the block. All of this gets divided by mass of the bullet and multiplied by the velocity of the system just after the collision. Now, if you have a look at this term here in the front, this initial fraction over here, clearly the mass of the bullet is pretty small compared to the mass of the block. So this number here should be pretty big because I'm dividing by a small number. Right, so clearly the mass of the bullet is going to be a pretty big number just from that expression. Now let's look at the uh, energy equation down here. Okay, the energy equation, what I can do now is uh, simply write it, uh, write the speed just after the collision in terms of the maximum height. The maximum height that the block swings is kind of an easy thing to measure. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, one thing you could see is that both of these terms here have the total mass of the system, which means I could simply cross it out because it's on both sides of the terms. 
Now all I want to do here is simply multiply by 2 and take the square root, and I'm going to get an expression here for vx. So vx should simply be equal to 2 multiplied by little g multiplied by my maximum height. Okay, and now all you have to do now is simply substitute this expression back up here, and I'll get my final expression for the speed of the bullet. Again, that's before the collision. It's mass of the bullet uh, plus a big M uh, divided by mass of the bullet. And let's substitute in our expression for the speed of the entire system after the collision, which is root uh, 2G multiplied by my maximum height. All right, this was a little bit of algebra, but this really is my final expression for the initial speed of the bullet. Let's go ahead now and put in some realistic numbers for the masses of the blocks in the bullet and the, and the height and see what we get. I also now want to also look at the kinetic energy before and after the collision to see how much kinetic energy we lose during this process. We're going to plug in some numbers into our expression. I'm going to assume that the mass of the bullet is 5 grams. It's going to hit a block that has a mass of 3 kilograms. And the maximum height over here is going to be 2.5 centimeters. So let's start by finding this initial speed of the bullet. Uh, let's make that a little bit smaller. So the initial speed of the bullet, just plug and chug over here. All right, our first term again, uh, mass of the bullet is 5 grams. Convert that into kilograms. Again, plus 3 and divided by the mass of the bullet. Now what else? Now we have square root of this entire term here. This is 2. A uh, little g will just choose 9.8. And again, this maximum height over here, convert that into meters if you want to work in standard units. Okay, and at the end, what I should get is that this initial velocity uh, gives me approximately 420, let's say 0.7 meters per second. Okay, that's the initial speed of the bullet. I could also calculate what is the initial kinetic energy of the bullet, right? That's my K0. This is one half mass of the bullet multiplied by this initial velocity squared. Again, substitute those numbers, mass of the bullet, 0, 0, 005. Uh, initial velocity, we just solved for that, 420.7. Square that. And what I end up getting initially, I have quite a bit of kinetic energy, 442.5. And that's measured in joules. All right, what's the final kinetic energy now, right? The final kinetic energy, well, I need to find the speed right after, but we also know that the final kinetic energy is actually equal to this maximum potential energy, right? And that's very, very easy to find, right? That was our expression, mass of the bullet plus mass of the block and little g multiplied by the maximum height. So if you go ahead and substitute our numbers in here, Again, the total mass of the system, let me just go ahead and write it out as 3.005 multiplied by 9.8 and again multiplied by my 2.5 centimeters. All right, so my final kinetic energy, what do you think it's going to be? Should it be equal to 442.5? Well, you substitute the numbers, actually what you end up getting is 0 0.736. Wow, that's quite remarkable, right? That means if you compare this initial kinetic energy, 442.5 joules, to my final kinetic energy down over here, this tells me that I've lost a lot of energy, right? I've lost nearly 442 joules of energy. So where did that energy go? That energy went into heat, right? If I was able to measure the temperature of the bullet in the block, just after the collision, you would find that those are considerably hotter. This term right over here, remember this term here was the final speed right after the collision. This is what I had called Vx. Uh, this term actually also appears right here. Uh, this is Vx just after the collision when the bullet is completely embedded inside the block. Go ahead and just look at that term right there. You should get something that looks like around 0 0.7 meters per second. Right? So we have this bullet that's initially moving at 420 meters per second. And then eventually it gets slowed down because it moves with the block at this tiny velocity of 0 0.7 meters per second. Okay, uh, what else can we calculate here? We can also look at the impulse, right? What if you wanted to find the impulse of the bullet, right? The, the impulse you can calculate by looking at uh, the change of linear momentum, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So the change of linear momentum of the bullet is simply the mass of the bullet and multiplied by well, V final minus V initial. Okay, go ahead and substitute your numbers in here for the bullet, and what you're gonna find here is negative 
Again, this is in kilograms and meters per second. If you go ahead now and you also calculate what is the impulse acting on the block. Right. Let's go ahead and do this one. Initially, the block wasn't moving, so its initial velocity is zero. So this is simply the mass of the block uh, multiplied by V final, which is Vx in this case. In this case here, you're going to get 2.1. <laughs> Uh, kilograms and meters per second, right? You have to have the same thing. This is a result of conservation of linear momentum. The change of momentum of the bullet has to be equal to the change of momentum of the block. Uh, that's really what allowed us to write down our first expression. Now, the reasons they have different signs over here, remember, uh, impulse can also be written as, let's go ahead and write this down. Impulse can be written two ways, either as the change of momentum of the object or as the force multiplied by the time. Keep in mind, this is really a vector expression. So this fact that the sign is different tells me that the force is in the opposite direction. The force acting on the bullet is in this direction. The force acting on the block is pointing to the right. The force is the same. The amount of time uh, that that force is acting on is the same, which is why the change of momentum has to be the same, regardless of the object that you're looking at. Okay, kind of a nice problem it involves a little bit of everything, conservation of linear momentum and conservation of mechanical energy, at least for the second part. So make sure you understand this problem. All right, again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching.